All right, we're moving on to phase two. Now we're into the real, I want to say the other part wasn't beautiful, but this is really creative artwork and stuff that you've got going on here, Sam. So I'm going to just kind of scan over here and show you what we've got going on here. This is kind of a windbreak uh, combination uh, art, uh, art fest uh, storage area because we ran out of room indoors to, uh, to put things. So uh, uh, my wife said everything we can create now goes outside or it doesn't get built. <laughs> So that's great. So again, what Sam was talking about is this is this is this feature I just showed you here. What we can see here is not just for artistic beauty and for creativity, but it's also create a windbreak against there because the winds come from northwest primarily and in, in the west, and we have a, an open slot to the west side, which gives us kind of a funnel right through here. Uh, and so none of these greenhouses are used in the winter time because sometimes we can't even get down here. Uh, with without snowshoes sure and yeah. so so this is part of that the concept we talk about of of really paying attention to your landscape all year long so think about where the sun moves throughout the different seasons think about where your snow goes you know, winds that's a great most people don't think about that so you're you guys have taken this to the next level of of and, gardening and greenhousing yeah you'll find little microclimates as well uh, we can be up at the house and the, you know, the temperature's in the 40s in the early springtime. And if we walk down to the greenhouse where we just were, we're in freezing. We've been in you know, as low as uh, 10, 15 degrees just walking you know, 300 feet. Yeah, so, and it, that's an interesting position because your house is actually higher in elevation than where the greenhouses were where we started there. So most people think that automatically as soon as you go lower, things get warmer, which tends to be true except for in the microclimates and in the valleys, the cold air actually sits toward the bottom and you can be 10, 15, 20 degrees colder in your valleys. So oh, keep yeah. that in mind in your properties as well. Shall we go inside this greenhouse? This is going to be a cordwood greenhouse that, they, that you guys built here. Yeah, we, we built this one. Uh, with the idea of having a nice thermal mass north wall, and that's why this wall is all wood, uh, wood and, and mortar actually, and then the foot, the footers all the way around are also cord wood uh, to give us a base. But we wanted to use this as a as a growing greenhouse for flowers. Uh, every once in a while, we'll put some lettuce or spinach in here um, because they're cold season crops, and we can get get to these uh, and make them last a little bit longer and start them a little bit sooner. Uh, during the course of the year. All of everything that's in here, we've got one raised box bed here. Uh, we took just dry stacked some cinder blocks and uh, did a lasagna garden here, which is basically layers of cardboard, newspaper, uh, soils, uh, just to build it up to where you don't have to bend over to get to it. And uh, so we've incorporated just a couple things in here. Uh, big water barrel in the corner just for uh, backup uh, water storage. And also as a possible potential heat sink against yes. it. Again, this is going to be the north wall that we're looking at with all the cordwood. If we turn to the south wall, we see that that's clear to let the sun through in the, in the winter months there and kind of keep things warm. What I also like that you've got here, Sam, are you've got all these uh, pots that you use instead of just having raised beds and so forth. You've got a bunch of different pots going on here. Tell me about that, what, the, what that allows you to do then. Well, we can literally grow anything in a pot uh, with, a, with a little tender care. Uh, just you know, if you're out shopping and you see a pot that intrigues you, you say, oh, okay. But we like, uh, my wife especially likes uh, flowers. And so we've got annuals and we've got some perennials. Most of the ones uh, that you'll see in this greenhouse are going to be annuals, uh, petunias and uh, Johnny Jump Ups. And there's some marigolds in here and stuff that will not uh, necessarily seed over to the next year. But it gives us a nice uh, mixture and a nice uh, relaxing space. Yeah, absolutely. So if you look up here, you can see kind of that darkened roof. That's that shade cloth that's over the top of that. you know what percentage shade cloth that is, Sam? Uh, well, I've, I've got some, uh, most of mine are at 70 plus. Okay. Um, one of the, I, mean, I know one of these that we have is a 90. Um, it seems like I can't get enough shade. Uh, when the sun gets going at this elevation, uh, it can be pretty intense. Absolutely. And that's, again, that sounds funny coming from, uh, we but use greenhouses to keep things warm. And then what we want to do is make sure the temperature stays. Yeah, the temperature in here so. right now is about 75 degrees. Yep, so let me show you that. So again, this is more of the ability to cre be creative and have real beauty in your gardening environment. So all the all the wood in here, Sam, you want to talk about that a little bit? The corner post, all the... Everything, this, the, the base construction, all of the uh, raw timbers uh, came off of our own property. 
Uh, we hand peeled them with the draw knife, uh, <laughs> built the frame, and the only concession we made to the lumber yard was the two by fours to uh, hold the roof on. Right. Uh, otherwise, it was uh, uh, even some of the big slabs. Uh, I think we cheated and got those from uh, from lump, uh, from a mill because we didn't have the the means to make our own slab. Uh, but uh, it's it's just uh, repurposing wood if we were cutting firewood uh, or if we're cutting uh, branches for. Uh, fire mitigation. We just incorporated some of the, the timbers into uh, a reuse. So again, S Sam actually hand peeled these, all these. Actually, Barbara hand peeled Oh these. my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Sam stood back and said, I can't, I can handle this. I need somebody who can really do the work here. All right. So Barbara did most of the, most of the hand peeling. She's done most of the hand peeling because uh, if you incorporate any of the wood uh, walls, the stick walls, uh, that's one of her Fortes. She, Excellent. She 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 was introduced to a draw knife and fell in love with it. <laughs> and so every once in a while I get criticized for not using it often enough. Ah. Excellent. Well, this is really beautiful again. How you can incorporate even on the cinder blocks down here. I wanted to show that. So they're th they're th stacked three high there. And part of that again is to make a raised bed that is easier to reach into instead of, you know, we think you know, uh, a raised bed has to look a certain way or be made out of certain things. This is cinder block, and but it's not just cinder block. They painted them. They created you know, beautiful kind of little mosaic on there, or uh, I guess you'd say more of a mural on there. And then uh, you know, instead of filling in the cinder blocks the, the with concrete, are in with oh, they dirt. are so with so dirt. We, yeah, so right, so you can grow actually in the in the tops of those instead of sealing them with concrete or something like that. So again, very creative ways of doing. Of doing gardening here that I hope that some of you will can incorporate and think about. All right. Thanks, Sam. We'll move on to the next thing. All right. So we're back on the south end of the cordwood greenhouse that we just saw there. Sam, what do we have here on the south end that you want to maybe discuss about? Okay. What we did is we had some leftover stone from another garden that we'll see later. Uh, these just came from, uh, well, I think, Pioneer Landscape down in the, the springs. I'll give them a plug. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, it's a, a dry stack where we can build some little caves and just get some different looks and stuff. Uh, some of the stuff that, that Barb has done, a lot of the artwork, uh, it just helps add, add a little color to the uh, to the garden. So yeah, this is a, a kind of a cool little garden that people most times won't think about to create a succulent garden and a succulent slash. Uh, you got yucca in there and cacti in there. So it's just a really kind of unique garden at 9,000 feet. So thanks, Sam. We'll jump on to the next place, which is going to be your, I guess, your wine and beer bottle what do you call it the it, we just call it the bottle house the bottle house okay well let's go look at the bottle house that's right adjacent here to where the the cordwood house is i'm gonna just kind of show you stand back here and show sam opening it up you can see kind of how it's all done you can see this all one the was inspired with uh we built a, a base frame uh framed it in with the uh, timbers and then uh, we made allocation for our windows so that we had our ventilation in here and then we started filling in all the gaps with uh, whatever bottles we could get our hands on. Primarily wine bottles. Um, we took advantage of uh, some people that were providing crafters with the supplies. And uh, then it became a, a, another flower garden and it evolved uh, over time. We built this over uh, the course of one summer. Uh, just We were both working full time. At, you know, and so it was just a matter of you put a couple layers in one day and you put a couple layers in the next day and you let that set up. And then the worst part of a bottle house is you have to clean the bottles from all the mortar once you're done. You know, so that's, uh, but it gives you a, a unique look. One of the things that you'll notice in here, we either have caps or uh, silicone plugs uh, in all the bottles to keep the wasps from coming in and the bees from coming in and making it uh, a little less comfortable for the for the owners. <laughs> Great point there. And and Sam assures me that they didn't drink all this stuff themselves, that they don't actually drink. So they've got these from a bunch of different folks. But if you can see in here just how beautiful it is, the different bottles, different color schemes. Again, there's a top, there's a shade cloth on the top of the of the roof there. Here are just the different plants and stuff they've got. And since this is what you might be looking for as the plants. What's actually there's in some, here? There's some dahlias. Uh, there's some gladiolas in here. Um, our tiger lilies have already bloomed out. Um, this is a real nice hosta that just loves it in here. And you can see it's just at the tail end of its blooms. And then we go ahead and add a few annuals. 
some coleus and some uh, petunias and some snapdragons and whatever whatever else uh, intrigues us at the at the nursery when we happen to be in there. <laughs> so again, most of these are all in pots, which is kind of nice. You can bring them inside. Those that you want to bring inside, you can you can move around a bit there. So these are the window vents that that Sam was talking about there. He's also got a roof vent there. Again, you want to get, I mean, it sounds funny, but you want to get the heat out of these greenhouses or contain just enough heat to, 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 to make it work for you. Yeah, but again, well, and then once again, we've got another heat seek water barrel in here. Yep. So that we don't have to go uh, round up water every single time we need to water the plants. Absolutely. So again, great idea for those of you who are artistic in nature and want to, you know, dream up whatever's possible this is you know this is a lot of great examples of what's possible here again from from taking gardening to a whole new level of incorporating extreme beauty and creativity and uh, imagination uh, into into what you're doing one of the nice things about container gardening uh, with the pots is we can bring them outside uh, to get extra sun but it also feeds the butterflies the hummingbirds the bees uh, and so you're, you're you're doing two things you're you're enjoying the beauty of the plants and then you're also uh, helping out the wildlife absolutely and again what's nice one of the really nice things about these uh, container gardens and you can do this with vegetables as well as well as we saw down below there um, is that you can take them inside and you can move them around and you can you know uh, if you have a freeze coming on you can pull them inside so you can protect them that way different than you know you can't bring a, a raised bed inside it just doesn't happen that way so so it gives you a lot of flexibility absolutely so Keep that in mind when you're doing some gardening as well, is that you can say, oh, I don't have the space, or I don't have the ability, or I don't have this, or I don't have that, but container gardens are a great way to start and keeps the wildlife away too if you put them up uh, away from them. So perfect. Sam, we're going to go up top here next and look at some of the other things you've got going on.